Haley from Merced, California. You know him by the name Dope as Yola. It's time for Story Time! Hey, what's up, YouTube? Dope as Yola here. Hope you're having a dope ass day. Welcome back to Story Time. And before we get started, guys, do me a favor. It helps me so much. If you're watching this video, if you're at home, if you're on TV, if you're at work, hiding in the bathroom to watch this, do me a favor, right below the video, right where it ends, there's a like button, a thumbs up, click that, it really helps. So guys, with that being said, let me get to the updates. You already know, I talked about it, I wanna do so many reenactments, I want Netflix to come at us like, yo, you have 12 episodes, you have a cult following, you need a show. Episode one was the near-death experience, we rented the plane, the fake plane, all that stuff, it turned out awesome. Last episode was the worst night ever where I threw up everywhere. By the way, quick little piece of information, uh, that was chicken soup and I had to actually puff on some cigs. So that second vomit was all real throw up. For everyone out there that watched the podcast, you already know, but the last story time, the throw up scene, the second heave was puke. And why am I telling you all this, guys? Because this episode is gonna be a throwback. I'm gonna take it to the old format, and this is why. I knocked out two episodes, I loved them. The next episodes I have are not just me, a camera, and a couple friends. I know I can go rent a plane, rent a set. I need actors, guys. I need actors, I need a crew. It's just, it's just really expensive. These next episodes, guys, the way I need to shoot them, I mean, I can half-ass it, do the bare minimum, it'll still be fun. But if I'm gonna do this the way I wanna do it, I need network money or I need big sponsorship money. So as always guys, let's light up this chopper of a joint. This is just some regular old OG. All right guys, got that lit? Let's get started. So before we get started, let me clarify this so there's not 500 comments of people bitching. The story I'm about to tell you from the podcast, turning down $10 million. If you watch the podcast, you've heard that. If you watch the podcast clips channel, you've even seen that clip. And the reason I'm telling you that is because a lot of people are gonna go, you're just telling the same story on a different channel. Remember on the podcast when I said, maybe one day when I can figure out a way to get money without having to rely on Instagram, I'll tell the story. So the company that tried to buy me out for 10 mil, I thought they were the ones that were deleting me over and over. And the company in this story time, is not the one deleting me. So now I'm not nervous anymore. And I'm gonna talk my shit. I'm gonna let you guys know what the fuck really happened. I'm gonna tell the story from the very beginning, right? This is where you got on the podcast. There's still all of this to go. If you've been here for a while, you know I've hinted at the story and I said, I don't think I could ever tell it. Here we are, guys, all right? I'm gonna finally give it to you, the untold story time. This is like the only beef I fucking have. So I'm gonna start this off around 2014. Push Trees is already like a year and a half in. We're doing great. For a cannabis clothing company, we are popping. A regular clothing company, we're doing well, but for to be a cannabis clothing company actually succeeding in clothing is crazy. We're doing good, guys. We're going to cannabis cups, we're going to shows, we're selling out every fucking drop. It's going well. As a business owner, it couldn't have been going better. And this next part is the part I told on the podcast, but like I said, this is only a piece. It's about 2015, right? I'm an OC at a friend's house. He's not my friend anymore. I'm not gonna even say his name. I don't fuck with that guy, but he is an older dude. He happens to know the owners of LRG, you know, Lifted Research Group. And if you know me personally, LRG was my all-time favorite brand Ever, fucking ever. I was poor as shit, just trying to work, trying to sell weed just so I could buy a new shirt. You know what I mean? Because they were like fucking 30 bucks. And to a poor kid, 30 bucks is a lot of fucking money. But I was super into fashion as a kid, even though I was poor. I was poor as fuck, but I was still into fashion. I still liked it. So yes, guys, for everyone out there that's ever wondered about this story, it is fucking LRG that I'm talking about. So with that little background, now it sets the premise of like my favorite clothing company of all time. Let's get started. I'm at my friend's house, we're just smoking weed. I know, I have the knowledge that he knows the owners of LRG. You know, it's not a business setting. I'm just out of homie smoking weed. He walks into the room like this, hey, on the phone. And I'm like, okay, what? And he goes, yo, how much you sell push trees for? I have no knowledge of what's going on. I don't know who's on the phone with. I'm just smoking weed. He comes in, how much you sell push trees? And I'm like, huh? I say, nah, I'm good. He gets on the phone, he walks away, he comes back a few seconds later. He's just pacing in his house, right? I'm just chilling. I think nothing of this conversation because if it was serious, he would've been like, yo, stop what you're doing, get on the fucking phone. But he's doing this one. Hey, what's up? So I'm like, it's not important. He's pacing in his house, he comes back, he goes, would you sell for $10 million right now? And I'm on the couch like, 
What? In my head, I would never sell push trees. I don't care if it's 10 mil. I know I can make a hundred mil off this fucking company. It was just starting. I'm not gonna give my momentum to another company so they can take my fucking wave of what I started. You guys know me very well. Money is not the most important thing in the fucking world to me. I did this shit for free for eight fucking years. You know that. Remember guys, he's right there 10 feet away saying, would you sell push trees for $10 million? So he asked me $10 million. I'm in my head thinking, nah, fuck, I'll make a hundred, right? All that's going. I look at him. I don't know who's on the phone. I'm just fucking around. I go, tell him to suck my dick. I yell just like that. Tell him to suck my dick dragged out like a fucking soccer announcer. Go. That's how I said dick. So I'm looking at my friend for his reaction. He just does this and walks out the room I'm like, Okay, 10 minutes, 15 minutes goes by. I have no idea. I'm just smoking weed, chilling. I'm not thinking about the call. He comes back into the room looking at me like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And we're friends. So I'm like, Yo, what the fuck you talking to me like that first off? And he's like, that was the fucking owner of LRG. He wanted to buy push trees right fucking now. And you said, suck my dick. He's looking at me and I'm like, you're a fucking liar. There's no way you really had LRG on the phone. And I'm like, oh, you know them. But in reality, he's mad at me. I'm looking at him I'm like, no, it wasn't. You're lying. That was not fucking LRG offering me 10 mil. You're a fucking liar. He's sitting there fuming. I can see the steam in his eyes. He's like looking at me like, <sighs> remember guys, he's way older than me. These guys are older. They just heard a young kid say, tell him to suck my dick. 20 minutes goes by and I'm still asking them, are you serious? Don't fuck with me. I mean, I'm like now realizing the repercussions of like, my favorite brand in the world. So after about 20 minutes of me asking him back and forth and him being pissed, I realized he is dead fucking serious and I just told them to suck my dick. All of that I told on the podcast. You've heard that story. That was a real deal I let slip through my finger. I wasn't gonna do it, but I maybe would've took like four mil for like 20%. You see what I'm saying? I would've been like, yo LRG, help me pump this to the masses. Give me some millions. And then I started thinking, LRG offered me 10 mil without ever meeting me. I must be on to some poppin' ass shit. So all of that you've heard on the podcast, let me rewind you real quick. I make push trees. How I started push trees, you know the story. I pushed on a tree with a joint and I had Rosie take a picture. I thought it was funny. Like, yo, push trees, sell weed. We made the drop, it sold out in 36 hours. A clothing company was born. You guys know the whole story. About four weeks into push trees being an actual company. Guys, remember, LRG is my favorite company. I remember all their shit. How did I? Forget about Hustle Trees. When I was in the 10th grade, LRG dropped a shirt and a sweater that said Hustle Trees. I don't know if you remember that, guys. That's what I'm referring to, a Hustle Trees. Say they came out with 20 items in the fall, two of them said Hustle Trees. So back to what I was saying, Push Trees is like a month old. I'm sitting there, I'm just doing comments. We're selling clothes like crazy. I'm like, no way, Push Trees, this is fucking amazing. Can't believe it's working. I'm going through comments and I get a comment. Hustle Trees LRG ripoff. And my whole world just cracked. I remember where I was standing in the Push Trees house, the fucking TV's to the right, windows straight, to the left is the old room where I kept all the weed shit, behind me is the bathroom and the fucking circle table. I'm looking at the comment and I look at Rosie and go, Rosie, Hustle Trees by fucking LRG and she looks at me like, oh my fucking God. It's not like I looked at their shit and went, I'm gonna change it up a little bit and do better stuff. Because when I tried to get the LLC, it was just gonna be the word Push, P-U-S-H, that was the company. Somebody already had it, so I'm like, you know what? Let's just keep it push trees, because I didn't want push trees. I wanted just the word push. Super fucking happy someone had it. Push trees sounds way tighter. But anyway, guys, I came to that realization, and from then, I'm like, oh, that hurts so bad. That sucks so fucking bad that people think I ripped it off. Completely forgot about Hustle Trees, because it was 10 fucking years ago. They released one shirt, one sweater. It's not a company. You know what I'm saying? Of course I forgot about it. And the reason I'm telling you this, guys, is for this next part. So let's go back. I'm in Southern California. I just told the owner of LRG, unknowingly told him, suck my dude. So now let's get into the aftermath. What the fuck happened? What were the repercussions from that? And this is where the story takes a turn. As soon as that happened, I'm checking LRG's page. Like, are they talking shit about me? I don't, I don't know, right? I'm on the rise of fucking doing weed shit right now. It's 2014, 2015, my shit's popping. I'm still on Instagram. I'm not deleted yet. That hasn't happened. So like celebrities are commenting on my shit. I'm just showing packs on the explore page. Like my shit's popping. So I'm thinking, Fuck, is LRG gonna start posting about me like I'm an asshole? I swear to God, I didn't mean it. I was just being stupid. I'm polite. I was just being dumb, I promise. One fucking week later, LRG introduces their new brand, 
hustle trees. Seven days to the day after I said suck my dick, they started hustle trees as a full on brand. And that's why you see that shit at Zoomies. So at first it scared me. It's like, yo, LRG is one of the biggest back then. I mean, they're not shit now, but back then they were massive. So I'm kind of like, dude, they're gonna kill push trees. They're gonna sell so much. People are gonna think I'm a knockoff. So for about a week or two, I was hella mad and pissed off and worried that LRG was gonna take all my sales that I had been building. Just for reference for everyone out there so you don't have to comment it like, no, he's not a white dude, he's Asian guy. That guy passed away, that's, I'm talking about the white dudes. Just so it's not in the comments 900 times, I'm not talking about the Asian owner, he passed away, the white dude that took over, that's who I'm talking about. I'm in Zoomies, maybe two months later, and I see a display when I walk in and it says, Hustle Trees, brought to you by LRG, and I lost my fucking mind. Why? Not because they're stepping in my lane. Why? Who cares? Yeah, the competition is great. I walk in, and the first, one of the first designs of all the new designs is directly one of my most famous pictures on my Instagram. That was on my Instagram. Lemon Kush, when life hands you lemons, make lemon Kush. That's my fucking picture. I put that shit at the push tree's house. I made the nugs stick onto the tree. I took the picture, I spray water drops, all that shit. Made me so violently fucking mad, guys, at Zoomies. I don't even remember what happened that day. I was just so pissed looking at like my favorite companies now, they official. They fucking hate me and they're using my own pictures for their clothes. You guys know me, I'm super nice, polite, reasonable. That fucking irritated me so damn bad. And the next piece of information is a win for me. You guys know Homies for Life. Homies for Life, my number one selling shirt of all time, Blunt and the Lighter. That is a spite shirt. LRG was taking a lot of my pictures and making shirts. They made a picture of a smiling soda and I went, you know what? I'm gonna make a smiling joint and blunt call it homies for life, fuck you. My number one selling shirt of all time is a spite shirt. I made that shirt out of spite. I thought of the idea in front of Dickie's Barbecue in Merced, right across the street from In-N-Out when I still lived in Merced. Them stealing my shit made me my number one shirt of all time. So months are going by. Now Hustle Trees is like collabing with weed companies and I see, I'm like, yo, you guys are really going all out, huh? What the fuck? You guys, I must have really pissed you off. So my next part of this story, guys, is gonna piss you the fuck off. I already know. And please, please do not, I'm asking you right now, if you're a fan, please do not go harass LRG. Please do not go harass Hustle Trees because both of that shit's beneath me. This is years ago. I don't even, I, I, they're not even a thought anymore. I just thought, you know what? Since I found out you're not the ones deleting me, hey, let me tell the story finally. <laughs> like I can finally tell this juicy ass fucking story. So like I said, please do not harass them. Don't go doing some dumb shit. I don't want that. They were my favorite brand. Maybe it's just one guy that got pissed and did all this and everyone else that works there is really nice. Or maybe even their fans. I don't want them to be butthurt over this story. I'm just telling you guys because you guys have watched the podcast and you've always wondered and now I can finally say it. So here's the next part of the story, guys. I'm at a cannabis cup. I couldn't tell you which fucking one I'm at. I'll all I know is the taco truck is right in front of our booth. That's what I, that's how I remember shit. Where were we at? What was by us? Who was next to us? It was the one where the taco truck was right there and I was with some other pieces of shit that I'm not friends with. I was in their booth. Besides the fact, that's who I was with at the booth. Taco truck, here we go. So I'm like selling clothes, hella merch. Everybody's like, yo, you got two booths? I'm like, nah. I could have swore I just saw your logo over there. I heard that about five times in an hour and I'm like, nah, there's something going on. Is someone using my logo? So I have somebody take over for me and I go walk around the cup. You know, when I used to vlog everything, that's when I was vlogging everything, but I started getting too busy. I had to run the booth. That's why those kind of stopped. But I just took like 15 minutes to walk the fucking cannabis cup as much as I could. I'm walking, just seeing fools I haven't seen, taking pictures with people. Like it's fun. I fucking love cannabis cups. I'm walking around, I'm walking, I see some weed booths and I just stop and go, Fuck you. I see a big ass booth, there's just hustle trees all over it. These motherfuckers came and got a clothing booth at the Cannabis Cup like, oh, you're really, really mad at me, huh? You're coming following everything I'm doing now? Okay, let's see. I just walk by, I'm not gonna be a dick, what the fuck? Nothing, I just walk by like, okay. And they're collabing with a weed company and they have Hello Weed on their booth and just like some clothes. I'm like, is this fucking serious? 
So I go back to the booth. I tell Rosie, her jaw drops. I'm like, Rosie, they are mad at me. So I go do my thing. Who gives a fuck? I'm gonna have fun. I'm smoking weed. This is a cannabis cup. I don't care about some fucking brand. This is our brand and our line is around the booth and they had no line. That made me feel a little bit better. Like, you guys got money, you're still not crushing it. Fuck you. It's because we're nice, you're not. Here's the part that upsets me. I know it's gonna upset you, but let's get through it. I'm standing in front of my booth, looking away from my booth, everybody else behind me. I have clothing racks and a little mannequin. First time I've ever had that clothing rack. So I'm like, ooh, I gotta like guard it so people don't steal it. You know, I got about 10 feet away from the booth so people can come in and see, oh, push trees. Oh, there's the booth. I'm just trying to like attract motherfuckers, right? So I'm standing in front of my booth, the clothing rack's right here, mannequin's right here. You know, taco truck's about 20 feet that way. We're the only, we're the last row of booths, right? So there's nothing else blocking us. I can see everyone around us. This Mexican kid and this black kid walk up. They're right in front of the taco truck. They order tacos, they turn around and just, Stare at me. I get that a lot. Maybe you're a fan, man. Maybe you're trying to recognize and figure out, why do I know that face? I get it. Staring, I don't take offense to. These motherfuckers are staring at me, though. You guys know you've been in a party just chilling, minding your own business. You're like, the fuck do you tell your homie? Are they staring at me? That's the feeling I got, like, are we about to fight? So this black dude, this Mexican dude is just standing there. I'm like, all right, motherfuckers. I'm still talking to fans. I'm, I'm very observant. I'm still talking to people. I can see them staring at me. And I'm getting more pissed as I'm talking to fans, taking pictures. I can still see them. I'm like, all right, where the fuck is this going? I don't have a fucking problem with people. Why are these fools staring at me? They get their food and leave. The whole walk away, they look at me with their food in their hand, looking at me. And I'm looking at them. And they walk away out of sight. And I tell Rosie, like, yo, I don't know what just happened, but those fools look like they wanted to fight me right now. If some shit happens, I'm letting you know, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of these dudes. But underneath, right? Because I'm talking to fans, still taking pictures, we're recording, so I'm trying to play it cool. They, they're fucking up my mood. About two hours goes by, hell of people at the booth. It's like 4.20, 5 o'clock that time. You know, it's getting a little cooler. More people got off work, so now it's like the cannabis cup is packed. There's hell of people. I see the Mexican dude and the black dude again, and now they're with another Mexican dude. I'm like, okay. This is where it's gonna pop up. I fucking feel it. I'm behind the booth taking pictures with people coming around, you know, signing shit, selling shirts. So, you know, I'm taking the money, getting the shirts out of the boxes. Me and Rosie do everything. Two Mexican dudes, a black dude, are standing by my clothing rack, like on the other side of it. I can't see their hands. I can just see their faces. Maybe one dude was taller, so I can see his shoulders. You know what I mean? Above the clothing rack. So I'm keeping an eye on them. Like, are they trying to sneak up on me? What the fuck is going on, right? So I'm talking to fans, doing our shit, and I keep an eye on them, right? They're really, really close to the rack. I'm like, why the fuck are they standing so close to the rack? Anyway, they move and they order tacos again. So they move, go like stand where the taco truck is away from the rack. And I'm like, okay, cool. At least you're over there I'm talking to fans, whatever. Three minutes goes by, dude. I look up and they're all mugging the dog in the fuck out of me. I'm looking like I'm going to lace my fucking shoes up and I'm going to go Fox you motherfuckers. That's how I felt like, why? What is the problem? So they're sitting like, you know where the ice is and the drinks are on taco trucks? They're standing right there, but looking at me. I don't know what came over me, man. I, I, I didn't egg it on. I just kind of wanted it. I don't know why. I'm like, I really, really, really want you guys to do something so I can stomp you into the earth. Like, there's three of them, even fucking better. Like, I was fucking pissed. So I was playing like cocky fuck. I was just wanted to show these guys like, no, 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 come on. I see you too. I started grinding up a shitload of weed in my hand with papers in my pocket. I was just grinding up. I walked in front of my booth like a backwood. Like I'm rolling a backwood. Like it was unnecessary. I didn't need to do that. I need a place so I can roll a joint. I was just doing it so I can just go in the front of the booth and look at them. So I was walking in front of my booth and I'm just staring at them. You're now the three assholes. I'm grinding my weed, looking at them like that, grinding my weed down, getting ready like, I'm gonna throw this weed in the air and rush you motherfuckers. I'm just staring at them like, you're staring at me. And I look at them like, oh, you guys, you guys wanna fight me, I can see it. So we're about 10 feet away, I'm staring at them, they're looking at me. One of them like starts pulling his pants up a little, I'm like, oh shit, is this really gonna happen at the cannabis cup? Remember, I'm looking at their fucking eyes, I'm not looking at their clothes, I'm not looking at their emblems and what they're doing, I'm just looking at them, I'm not observing fools. Usually I do like, oh, those are sick ass shoes, or oh, nice ass pants, some shit like that, right? So I'm just grinding up the weed looking at them, the guy pulling his pants up, and out of nowhere do like, god timing. Like three fans walk by and go, what the fuck? 
and start losing their, all foreign dudes, losing their minds with their cameras, like jumping up and down, like some soccer chant shit. They were all fucking losing their mind. They're met, they're meeting me like, we watch your stuff. We're from fucking Germany. I'm like, we love your stuff. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, guys. They're staring at these dudes like, yeah, fuck you. These guys got me in a good mood. Fuck yeah. I don't get like that. I'm ne I never get like that. And for me to act like that, you piss me the fuck off. I'm not even fucking done. And as I'm talking to them, I'm looking at the dudes and now they have their food. They're standing there like putting their salsas on and shit. And now for some reason, I look at them. And when I look at them, every single item is LRG and hustle trees. The fact that I overlooked that the last time, what just made me reassured like how mad I was. And they turn around to walk away and I'm still talking to the fans. Every one of them, Hustle Tree shirt, LRG hat, LRG pants. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Suck my dick? Did all of this? You guys, if you're watching, you don't get paid enough to fucking dog somebody that would have stomped you the fuck out. I watched these fools walk away. I continued my fucking day. Had a great day, successful as fuck. The only problem was these fucking hoodlum ass fools looking at me like we're at a house party and I'm wearing the wrong color. That's how the fuck I felt. I felt like I was in Merced and I accidentally wore a blue shirt type shit. This portion of my brain is cannabis cut mode, talking to fans, hanging out, having fun, filming, doing fun shit. But this portion of my brains go, stomp these motherfuckers out if they show up again. I'm still pissed, but just trying to have a good fucking time. So it's about an hour after I realize all of these fools are working for LRG, right? I'm just talking to people. I go around to fix the shirts on the rack. And now I know why these motherfuckers were standing by my rack. As you guys know, push trees, we make a lot of black, mainly because I'm a fat guy and colors don't really look that great on fat guys. And I'm mainly our model. I'm trying to lose some weight right now. And once I do, we'll, we'll introduce more colors, okay? Because it just doesn't look right. Anyway, back then I had like two colored shirts and a white shirt. So I'm just fixing the rack of the hangers, I'm putting the shirts up, you know, wiping them down. You know, it's a cannabis cup, it might get dusty. I'm wiping them down. I pick up the last shirt, the shirt on the farthest part of the rack, the part where they were standing, these motherfuckers. I look at the shirt, the white shirt, these assholes rubbed fucking reclaim all over my fucking clothes. Like they must have brought a couple dirty dabbers and grabbed my shirt and cleaned all the dabbers off. So there was a bunch of pieces of the shirt stuck together. A what? I, cu I couldn't fucking believe it. I'm fucking observant. Nobody else was standing by the shirts more than just like, you know, looking through shit. They were the only ones standing there, but I knew they were the fucking dudes from earlier, so I was just watching them. So the whole time I'm looking at, staring at them while I'm talking to the fans, one of these motherfuckers, or all of them, is just wiping dabs, wiping reclaim all over my fucking clothes. So instead of me going, motherfucker, and rushing to their booth and, and like fighting them, I went, you know what? That shows me that I'm crushing it. You guys had to ruin my shit. This is a little baby booth. I don't even have a sign. You guys have a whole tent. Fuck you. So I took the shirt off the rack, smiled, replaced it, and sold the fuck out of the rest of my clothes and didn't let it bother me because I knew that's just something they want. They want me to go over there and fucking box one of these fools. That's what they want. I am too much of a fucking adult and I don't care enough. It's a couple shirts, bro. Fucking have it. You can fucking have it. So that's how that cannabis cup ended. Nothing else happened. They didn't come back. I saw my shirts a couple minutes later, was pissed for a second, let it go, sold out, good day. Fast forward, okay, this is not over. Fast forward to about 2017, mid 2017. If you've been following me for a while, remember that like two summers in a row where I was at every single Mac Miller concert? And a lot of you are wondering, why the fuck are you chilling in the backstage? How are you just getting fucking high the whole show? It's because my friend Justin Boyd was Mac Miller's personal photographer. My other friend Q that you've seen on this channel was Mac Miller's manager. My homie DJ Afterthought was on tour with them and he was their DJ. And of course Clockwork was the main DJ, but just that's how I know that circle. That's how I was always backstage at the shows. So it's like 2017, I think it's Good AM tour. I can't remember, but I remember I went to like five fucking shows that tour, smoked the whole. If you went to any of those shows and saw that cloud on the side of the stage, this guy. It was me rolling up fucking ounce joints and shit. So I'm not just saying this to say it. There's a reason why I brought this up. Mac Miller fucking tour, everything's going good. They say, hey, next show is gonna be in Orange County. I go, you know what? Fuck yeah, I went to the last three shows. Let's smoke this one out too. We go to the observatory. I've never been there, first time there. We're in backstage, we go, it's a really small backstage area. We're backstage and for some 
fucking reason, security is being a bitch to me. They won't let me bring my weed in and I'm in backstage. I'm not coming in with a ticket. I have a fucking pass on my neck. I had to call Tree J. I could see him like, he's like, come in. I'm like, dude, they won't let me bring my weed. He's like, we have a pound of weed right here. What are you talking about? He comes over here, argues the guy's like, no, we can't let him bring that in. After about five minutes, they let me bring all my weed in and I'm walking past the security guard like, did I do something wrong, man? Like, was I rude to you? I swear to God, it was not on purpose. I just walked up. The back of this venue is like a big open space, like a parking lot, there's benches. That's where all the artists chill and hang out. We're just smoking it up, chilling. The opening of the doors right there behind the other wall is the stage. We can hear motherfuckers yelling and chanting, like hyped up. I get there like an hour before Mac Miller's supposed to even go on stage, so we got time to chill. We're smoking it up, I'm hanging out, we're fucking around, and I just noticed that, I mean, I noticed it, but security just kept like eyeballing me, like I was gonna do something. All I, fucking regular dude, obviously wearing push trees shit, just chilling. So it comes time to go on stage. They all go on stage and me and my homies and Rosie, we sit on the side of the stage, smoke it out, just watch the BTS of one of my favorite fucking rappers. Like, it was a very fun stretch of time going to all those shows. Anyway, we're walking in the back with Mac Miller, with Tree J, with everyone, and all, like eight people, security stops just me. And I look around, not Rosie, not anybody, just me, puts his hand, big Samoan dude, stops me, goes, you can't go back there. And I'm like, do I have the wrong pass, man? I, I can get the right pass. Like, no, you can't go back there, uh, uh, that's the wrong pass. Tree J hears it and goes, what's the problem, bro? It's the same fucking pass, it's the artist pass. What's the problem here? Tree J like starts talking to the dude, walks him a couple feet over like, you know what the fuck's going on? Why are you harassing my homie over here? What's going And he starts walking off and I'm just like, little kid in trouble with the principal's office, like, can I, can I go to recess now or? That's how I felt like, sorry, fuck. I'm looking at Rosie like, go, go on stage, start smoking, I'll be like, go. And she's waiting for me, I'm like, no, go, go. We'll take care of this, just go. She's only 10 feet away, but Rosie's not gonna leave me behind, I understand. I tell her, no, go, I got this, don't trip. So as Tree J's talking to the dude, I'm just like, dude, what the fuck, man? I'm just looking around this backstage green room area, turn around and see the biggest LRG fucking logo ever. I didn't know that the owners of LRG own the observatory. They must have been following my Instagram and said, yo, I'll be at the observatory tonight. And said, do not let this motherfucker in. But they're also not gonna go, hey, Mac Miller, your friend can't come in. Hey, Tree J, your friend can't come. They're not gonna do that, but they're gonna give me a hard fucking time as much as they can. And two minutes later, Tree J comes in like, don't even fucking listen to them, walk with me, don't fucking talk to this guy. He was pissed, security's looking at me like, fuck you. I'm like, yo, I swear to God, I'm a nice dude, I swear. Trey J walks me back, the show goes on, everything. And once again, please do not go harassing these motherfuckers, I'm just telling you the story. But that, guys, was a while ago. I haven't had another run-in, and I'm not doing this story to stir shit up. I'm not gonna, I don't want you guys to go attack these people on social media. Leave Hustle Trees and LRG alone. If you don't if you don't like them, just don't buy them. If you like them, you can keep liking them. I love that brand. That was my favorite brand. But the fact that they did that to me, I gave away every piece of LRG clothes in my closet. It was worth, no lie, it was worth like, Eight racks, all those jackets and all that shit that was in plastic still. I wanted to sell them and I tried to sell like two jackets and I went, you know what? I ain't trying to promote LRG. I'm giving this shit away and I gave it all to my cousin. All through high school, me and my cousin Adrian, that's all we try to do, work, try to buy LRG shit. You bought a jacket? Oh my God, I'ma buy a jacket. Like that was our thing. So it did break my heart, guys, taking my whole closet of stuff I had been collecting since 10th grade, putting it in one bag and giving it away. But I felt so played and kind of just like, I was butthurt, like you guys really? For real, man, I'm nice, man. Like. It was an accident. I didn't know you were on the phone. I didn't know you really offered me ten million dollars. How unprofessional are you? You offer somebody their company over the phone. You didn't even talk to them. Third party. You're unprofessional. If anything, I was just being hilarious. So for everyone out there, my fans that have always wondered, I wonder who the fuck offered him ten mil. Now you know, all right? Now you know who actually offered me $10 million for push trees and I told him to suck my dick and all of this shit happened. The next three years was not fun. Them plus one more fucking company you guys know, I'm not gonna get into that. Those two companies take my shit all the time so I stopped posting anything until it was in production because I started seeing the designs I post like, guys, would you like this? Cause we're friends. It's like me texting you and going, hey man, you like this? So I posted it so my fans can give me some feedback. Like, I'm a real person, I'm trying to talk and what do you guys like? So I would post, what do you think about this? 
two weeks later, new collection all around the shit I just dropped. But if I make it, I look like I just bit them and took their shit. I'm the little guy, all right? I got the little platform, but I got the fan base that they wish they fucking had because they're assholes, right? They were being dicks. I was being nice, and that's why the fuck I'm still around. Where the fuck are they? But remember guys, it's like four or five years ago, they might have different owners, they might have different management. I don't know who did it. Was it a fucking internal thing? Was it the owner that got super pissed and said all these things? Fuck that guy. I don't know, so I'm not gonna sit here and blame somebody. I'm just letting you know my experience, what I experienced, and what I know for a fact. Fucking dicks. All right. Guys, that was a story I thought I would never tell, but finally, we're here and we can finally talk about it because we don't have to depend on Instagram to pay my fucking rent anymore. And once again, guys, I'm gonna say it. Please do me a favor, leave a like on the video. Just go right below it. It's, it's free as hell, all right? And if you're super fucking awesome, you got some other time, press the share button, it'll copy the link text it to a friend, maybe they'll be a new fan of the channel. Guys, thank you so much for watching and supporting and listening to the stupid shit that I talk about. This is season four. Really appreciate you guys being here. I don't know which episode this is. I couldn't tell you how many stories, how many fucking eighths, but I know guys, we are over 50 million views. We added up all the story times recently. We're over 50 million views on story time. That's great. And we're shadow banned. And you know what I mean? Like we're shadow banned, we're age restricted. And we're still clearing these numbers, so thank you guys so much for being here. I really fucking appreciate it. I'm glad. I got it off my chest finally, all right? This has been a story I've been wanting to tell since 2015. So thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for leaving likes. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching the podcast. Thank you for everything. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. And until next time, I'm Dope Yola. Have a dope-ass day. <laughs> this bitch, what was up?